What's up guys? Matt Cole Michael is outside. So he just pulled up. So let's go take a look and see what Michael's got on the truck today. You guys, come on. Inch and a quarter shallow socket. Oh, for the oil filters? Yeah, I know we don't have a lot of them come in, but it sure is nice to have it when you need it. A real old. Ain't no better way than to start right off the bat looking up something in the book, right? That's right. That's the way to do it. Make you work for it. Hey, what's the what else is working? Mm -hmm. Import car filter wrench. Turns my stomach. <laughs> I don't know, that can't be no harder to get to than the oil filters on those LS engines. Even on the Yukons, it's a pain in the butt. Up in that little hole. Bad, bad, bad. That's what I should have done, is been an engineer. That way I can say, all right, we can burn their hands, we can cut their hands, we can scrape their hands. That's a perfect place right <laughs> there. Hide this in here. Yeah. Let's take the intake off, change the oil filter. That'd be even better. Be like a Cadillac and have a starter under the intake. It says a 32 condition, of course. Strong magnet. Yeah, that's what I bought. I bought the uh, ratchet wrench. Michael, you know what that cob means when it says cob LEDs? <laughs> we'll test your tool knowledge. Huh? You know what cob stands for? It's the way the LEDs are placed. But I, I mean, I don't... You don't know what it means? I obviously know. Computer on board? Okay. Yeah, I just knew it was the way the LEDs were placed. <coughs> Well, that tells right this <laughs> I didn't know it. I thought cob was like corn, you know. Cob, corn. Well, I bet somebody will tell us for sure what it is on here for the end of the day. That's right. <laughs> They're always good about it. They're always good about telling us right off the bat. Oh, uh huh. But that's all right. We got to learn somehow, right? That's it. That's how you learn. I just play with tools all day. I don't. I don't make them. So what is this handy bandy big? L-shaped Allen key with this funny looking thing welded on the back. What is Still that? puller. Really? Yep. That's an interesting little thing. Yeah, that's, a lot of my big truck guys are the ones that really like that. Hmm. They say that you it has that hook and then you can hit this with a hammer and it pulls hmm. the sill out. That's a good idea. That's pretty sharp. Well, that's what they told me. I, uh, I worked with a guy once who had a homemade job similar to that that would have like a big bolt welded on it. Yeah. Let me, look, let me, let me see what their description is. Mine's still full. Let me see what their description is. <laughs> That's sort of like this right here. You call this a trim 
removal tool. tool. Yeah. We use it for airline pullers. Yeah, so I mean, hey, right, whatever it works. And clip pullers, like, you know, those little ABS lines, you put the clips in there. Yeah. That's what we use. I say whatever it works. I don't want to, you know. We can never pull no trim with it. Well. But all of them's got some miles on them. Yeah. <laughs> That's an interesting thing. I've heard trim tool, clip puller, all, all kind of different. I know this is the one you got, ain't it, Bill? We used the other day to cut that hose off with. Yeah. Man, that is a hose cutting son of a gun right there. Yes, yeah, sir. Then we got replaceable waves come with it. We're supposed to have. And it's a body mold trimming oh, that, tool, but we use it to cut hoses, hoses. with. Man, I think it says hoses on there somewhere. It worked good. Let's see. What does it say? No, body mold trim tool. We've been using it wrong, but it works oh, good. Hold on. Let's see. Yeah, see? It's cut plastic trim, rubber hoses, wire, and more. It works good. See, you just, you just thought you were using it wrong. We had some hard plastic line the other day, and it snipped her right out of there. Worked like a champ. You're going to have to tell us the price on that table in there. What's that on that thing? <laughs> yeah. Evidently, I'm going to have to get it down. I can't. <laughs> I've looked at it three times and come up here with three different part numbers. I thought it was 0P7. It's SP7. That makes sense. Cell phone 7. Uh oh. Didn't play the power bill. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's a uh, cell phone. I don't know what that's for. Somebody just had a big alley in which they made this. Yep. Started selling it. It worked. And they said, hey, we can sell that. Too bad. No. I'm guessing that's, uh, we don't know what kind of sales we've got to do that we need that something that big. Wheel sales, probably. Wheel sales? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Makes sense. Boy, I'll tell you what, that light don't weigh nothing, does it? It does not, and I've sold that light for almost a year and did not know, we're talking about what the tool guy didn't know. Uh, didn't know it had six different settings on it. I knew when you cut it on, it had that, but uh, it had six different brightnesses. Or right, you just hold it down? Just hold it down. And a guy was reading the box one time, I was showing it to him, he read it, he goes, so how do I do the other settings? I said, what are you talking about? It says it's six different settings. Well, okay. All I can say is if you run a light on low, you don't really need a light. Well, yeah, we've discussed that before. <laughs> uh, if it ain't burning your cornea, you run it on the wrong setting. Or if you look at it, you have to be blinded for like 45 seconds before you can. Yeah. Bright lights are always good. Yep. They uh, definitely yeah, get you in trouble blind. sometimes. Especially the old style that uh, would burn the carpet. <laughs> you had the yeah. old, you had the old screw-in bulb with the extension cord. That was always fun. Yeah, somebody took a one of those spud and wrenches or whatever, you know, the line it things. Yeah. Uh, an Allen wrench and designed that. We had a teacher in college tell us about there was a dealership and I can't remember where it was, but the actual shop was on the bottom level. Yeah. And then the sales was on top of it. was on the hill. Yeah. And it would kind of split up the building. And uh, somebody had a gas leak and had one of those old style yeah. drop lights. And it broke. Yeah. And blew up the whole shot. Killed everybody in the shop. Wow. Now there was uh there was an incident in Alabama um several years ago with a drop light. I think it was in a like a quick lubo and you know they got all those brake cleaner and all that and I think they dropped the light or whatever and when it sparked when it busted it, it caught fire. I think it hurt a couple. I don't think it killed nobody but I think it hurt some people. Yeah those drop lights are mm, good thing we got away from them. Especially if you don't have good ventilation in the shop. Most shops don't. Well it's like that guy said about that one it was absolutely you know, with the door closed, there wasn't any ventilation. Yeah. So. Yeah, walking in and out of over all the shops, you know, one thing for sure is most of them's too dark. No ventilation, usually no air or heat. Mm -hmm. 
you know, it's winter time is probably one of the most dangerous places in a shop because everybody's using those heaters. Yeah. And especially body shops, it's like, wait a minute, hold on. Paint fumes, paint thinner, <laughs> all that good stuff. Some Bondo dust <laughs> floating around. You walk and through the door and like, Ooh, one yeah. of those diesel turbo heaters. <laughs> yeah. Blowing. It's like, well, I walked in the shop uh, this week and they had a truck that they were working on the fuel system and they had one of those big diesel heaters and uh, they were right beside it draining the diesel and I was like, hmm, yeah, y'all come out and see me. <laughs> I'll be out there. You know, I'll it's, back uh, my truck up away from the building just a little bit. Well, you know, it's. I'm sure somebody's gonna point out that you know, you can drop a cigarette. What is it in diesel and it not do nothing? Yeah. yeah. Uh, well, that's all good and well. I don't want to test that theory. It may be proven a hundred different times, but I don't want to be the one to test it. Okay. I just seen that. Well, I, I, I figured <laughs> that, but. <laughs> my, in fact, I had a tank. A uh, 500 gallon tank sitting out in front of my house one day, and uh, I had a cigarette lit. My mama was, she said, What's in that? And I said, Diesel fuel and water. She said, Oh my god, you're smoking right now? I was like, It ain't gonna hurt nothing. She said, And she just, you know, didn't want to believe me. And I was like, Look, throw it out. You know, at that point, in her mind, she said, I've raised the idiot. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I can't tell you she said that. Well, you know, you hear people talk about how diesel burns hotter and all that. It's all on how the diesel's lit, right? You know, that's just, you know, when people tell me they got to change their spark plugs in a diesel, I just kind of look at them. <laughs> okay. Well, before everybody has to leave in the comments 15,000 times, where's Wally? Wally's sick. Wally's not here today. Wally's not going to be on the video today because Wally's at home sick. So where's Wally? So here we go. <laughs> Wally's at home. Somebody will still <laughs> comment get, on that. They'll, they'll still ask where Wally is. Where's Wally? Yeah, I get a kick out of watching the videos. <laughs> it's like, okay. Warning, do not use while engine is running. <laughs> now there's a reason why they put that on there. <coughs> yeah. To, to stamp that on it. <laughs> well, you know the bad thing about it is, if you think about it, what kind of sensor is that? Exactly right. I mean... <laughs> yeah. Uh, I don't... Somebody's done it, right? Something's happened. That's been there. <laughs> Somebody's done tried to reach up and grab hold of a crankshaft and yep. stop the engine while it's. Mm. <laughs> it's sad that, that Matt Go would have to spend the money to stamp that on there. Well, look at their uh, instructions for the light, right? You thought they yeah. overkilled it. But <laughs> what has happened in our life that we've had to have that many instructions wow. on the light? Uh, well, did you get any of the Bluetooth things in yet? I haven't yet. I'm waiting on them. I haven't got a whole lot of tools in this week. Uh, we didn't order just a whole lot this week. We scaled back. You know, last week we mm -hmm. talked about how this guy got an ego and decided to order everything. So we scaled back just a little bit. We're getting rock closer to the expo. And if you hadn't asked your dealer what's what's coming up at expo, you need to ask because that's where the deals are going to be at. So yep. most of the dealers are doing cards to where you can write down what you're interested in because it's more likely going to be on sale at expo. So if you hadn't talked to your dealer about expo yet, now's the time to do it. There you go. There's going to be. I've only been to one, but there was great deals at that one. And every time I talk to anybody about Expo, they talk about how they go spend their life savings at it. So, you know, hey. it is what it is, right? I uh, quit turning wrenches to where I could buy more wrenches to try to sell, right? Mm hmm. But, uh, that's the way to do it. All right. Well, if you ain't got nothing new this week, I guess we'll. Get back to work. Must you get back to work? Yeah, it looks like y'all got a shot full in there, so. <laughs> yeah, definitely do. All right, guys. Like always, thanks for watching the video. If you like it, be sure to check down in the links in the description. We got some cool tools, these tip codes, all that good stuff. If you like the video, hit that thumbs up and click that subscribe button. And I gotta go in here because Bill's gotta get back to work. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> See ya.